Welcome back to the News at 10. Now to some of the pictures you sent into our eyewitness portal. First is this one from Akmeno Street of Surulere in Lagos State showing a building construction suspected to be illegal. Our eyewitness reporter is asking the state government to check this to avoid a building collapse. It's followed by this one from Akinojo Street, Ajuan, in Lagos State, showing a falling electric pole. Our eyewitness reporter wants the concerned distribution company to take note. We also have this one from Ogijo area of Ogun State, showing a bad road. Our eyewitness reporter wants the state government to fix it. Next is this one from Songota area of Ogun State, showing a flooded area. Our eyewitness reporter is asking the state government to look into this. Finally, is this one from Aripo area of Ogun State showing a road in a deplorable state. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the government to do something about it. Well, we thank you for sending in those pictures and urge you to keep them coming. To strengthen its internal security and check the resurgence of militancy, the Bayasa state government has initiated a series of meetings with community leaders, oil companies, security agencies and other relevant bodies in the state. At two of such meetings held recently, leaders of the communities and oil companies declared that they are not in support of any militant group and will do their best to ensure that the militants are made to pay for their crimes. The resurgence of militancy in the Niger Delta is a subject of this meeting between the Bayelsa State Governor, Tereke Dixon, and leaders of various communities in the area. The dialogue is called to distance the communities from the renewed attacks and propose an action plan requiring the handover of suspected militants in the communities to men of the security force. They are going about blowing up oil installation and facilities. And they don't know that for every pipeline and oil installation they blow up, they are attacking the revenue base of the state. They don't know that for every blowout, they are destroying further our already compromised environment. Governor Dixon announces the criminalization of any form of negotiation with the militants who engage in hostage taking and kidnapping. No ransom negotiation, no ransom payment. And I always do things with myself as an example. You all saw that even when my own younger sister, blood, full blood, was a victim. I never gave them one wound to negotiate everything. And moving forward, let me tell you, that's not just our policy. I'm going to criminalize even negotiation with kidnappers in the state. A consensus is reached that militancy can be conquered from within the communities. Conditions have been made. I think it is left for the security agents or agencies to re-strategize and see how um, the security situation can be caught. But now that we have political activities very close to us, why are we experiencing more security issues? Because the, the youth, the youth, they even have more respect for the politicians more than the uh, traditional rulers. In a separate meeting with the heads of oil companies operating in the state, the issue of kidnapping comes to the fore. For Mr. Makoro Gundi, general manager of the Nigerian Ajib Oil Company and general manager external relations for Shell in Nigeria, Mr. Igoweli, the meeting makes them feel much safer to continue operations in the state. Everybody, we had a very fruitful meeting with His Excellency, talking about security. 
activities and how we can sustain uh, our operation uh, in the States. Without a peaceful operating environment, everybody loses actually. So it's a chicken and egg situation. We need the operating environment to be stable for us to optimally produce. And the more we produce, the more value comes back to the state. So even when you talk about CSR and all that, you can only do as much CSR as your business and the value you generate can carry. With the parties here in agreement on fighting militancy together, it may no longer be business as usual for those behind the vandalism of oil facilities in the Niger Delta. Oh, God. God. Well, the Delta State Advocacy Committee Against Oil Facility Vandalism, held, headed by the State Deputy Governor, Mr. Kinsley, Otuaru is confident the group will hold for the vandalism of oil installations in the state. Mr. Otuaru made this comment while on a visit to the site of the Chevron gas pipeline, which is alleged to have been blown up by Niger Delta Avengers. As part of the ongoing engagement of the oil producing communities, the Delta State Advocacy Committee, which seeks to fashion out ways to end the bombings of oil facilities in the state, visits the Oboroda community to sensitize them on the dangers of pipeline vandalism and its negative effects. This thing, they give a very, very bad image to Delta States. Besides giving bad image to Delta States, they also do try to they fall down our revenue. So Senator Boa says, go go go, talk to all the youths, talk to all the elders, talk to all the women. Make everybody put eye for ground. Make people not go spoil something for our head. Eye for me. The leader of the community, through an interpreter, acknowledges that blowing up pipelines is a heinous act, but points out that government needs to do more. Government needs to see that and have a return and look at the issue critically. What is making this whole thing to be cumbersome, tiresome, frustrating? Is this oil companies? I can't be a Javani angolity of Bacha. These oil companies, they don't sit down with the communities to do proper community engagement. After listening to members of the community, the Advocacy Committee also meets with representatives of the NNPC Chevron joint venture behind closed doors. From here, the committee heads to the explosion site at Otunana, where repair works have begun to bring back the damaged pipeline to its working capacity. We want to do all in our part to engage every one critical stakeholder to ensure that we stop immediately this bit of destruction of our critical oil assets is, is actually very, very bad. And uh, we want to also see how we can deepen our intelligence to know who and who directly or indirectly involved and to know whatever remote or immediate cause that may have prompted whoever that is concerned doing all of this uh, destruction. As the Delta State Advocacy Committee moves from one community to another, its members say they will continue to lay platforms for engagement and dialogue in order to foster peace and harmony. In the meantime, former militants from the Niger Delta region have called for a halt to a resurgence of attacks on oil and gas facilities. They say it is an unnecessary distraction for President Muhammad Buhari's administration. The defunct movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta MEND, a group of former militants who previously targeted oil-rich region, made the call in a statement late on Friday. The former MEND members said, quote, we should give President Buhari the opportunity to fulfill his promises to the Niger Delta people by maintaining peace in the region. End of quote. The president said on Friday he had heightened the military presence in the region where attacks in the last few weeks, mostly claimed by a group calling itself the Niger Delta Avengers, 
have driven the country's oil output to a more than 20-year low. And barely 24 hours after the kidnap of two judges in Kogi State, the traditional ruler of a later community in Ajakuta local government area of the state, Chief Aminu Aku, has been kidnapped. The traditional ruler is said to have been abducted by some gunmen on Friday night at about 8 p.m. while returning from Ajakuta to his community. The abductors are said to have established contact with the family, demanding a ransom for his release. Well, let's take a look at the day's business news now with Anne Wawodo. Hello and welcome to Business News. Shareholders of companies to be delisted from the exchange have been assured of investment protection by the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The chief executive, Mr. Oscar Onyema, explained this at a meeting with shareholders of the Central Securities Clearing System in Lagos. To try to make sure that uh, they meet the post-listing standards and that they report regularly and the rest of it. We even recently introduced uh, facts behind the restructuring because some of them said they were restructuring. I was saying, okay, it's important for shareholders to know this. Uh, so there has been a lot of work going on to protect shareholders, especially minority shareholders. And uh, sometimes uh, the companies are just not able to meet the standards anymore. And we cannot leave those companies to be listed on the exchange because that is misleading to shareholders. Because shareholders will then go and buy the shares when these companies are uh, almost dead. The Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority plans to float an infrastructure bond in the medium term. The chief executive, Mr. Uche Oji, explained this during a visit to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. He says the capital raising will be channeled into agriculture, real estate and other critical sectors of the economy. He adds that other investment vehicles will be introduced to address Nigeria's infrastructure gap. Um, products that we are considering. Um, we're also creating co-investment funds where we're bringing capital from outside the country. So we're closing one or two. Well, the first year, this year, you see one for agriculture and you see one for uh, real estate. And we're planning to, a few more of those. The idea is for us to use our capital as catalytic to bring institutional investors and other sovereign wealth funds who want to invest with us here in Nigeria as the anchor or as the channel to bring in capital into the country. So we, we, part of our strategy is to actually use our infrastructure fund to create platforms that bring other institutional investors um, into investing in Nigeria infrastructure markets. So infrastructure bonds is one, co-investment vehicles is another, you know, working with the pension, uh, pen, PENCOM and the PFAs to develop the infrastructure market is another tools uh, 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 at our disposal and things we're working on. Bullish sentiments persisted at the Nigerian Stock Exchange this week, with the all-share index closing 2.55% higher. Market capitalization also appreciated to 9.3 trillion naira. Total volume traded increased by 37.37% to 2.44 billion shares, worth 13.14 billion naira, and traded in 23,600 and 80 deals. Market breadth turned negative with 33 gainers against 37 losers. UBA led the pack of gainers with an addition of 82 cobalt to its share price. On the other hand, Vitafirm was top on the losers list for the week, shedding 1.13 cobalt of its share price. Despite the release of the negative real GDP figure yesterday, capital market analysts at Codras Capital expect another positive close in the coming week as investors keep taking advantage of attractive share prices. And let's move to the Treasury bills market now, where the bears were dominant this week, with average yield expanding to 89 basis points to close at 9.75%. At Wednesday's primary Treasury bill auction, the Apex Bank sold 32.44 billion naira, 22.82 billion naira, and 55.68 billion naira 
of the 91, 182 and 364 day bills. Traders say the markets remained quiet after the auction, with most of the participants looking to next week's MPC meeting for guidance. And that's business news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Umawado. The rest of the news at 10 continues with Harriet. Still ahead on the news at 10, all is now set for the kickoff of the 8th Channel's National Kids Cup as organizers hold draws for the ceremony. That's on Sports News. Join us again.